So you're looking off the left? Yeah, that's where that guy just stopped. Part of that just went through his truck. Okay. Now he's running off into the field. You see this? Yep. I got a guy running, uh, throwing a weapon. Smoke him. Those five seconds were all the evidence an Apache crew needed to kill three unarmed men. This is gun camera footage from an Apache tank-busting helicopter in Iraq. This is a tractor that has been ploughing a field. Although the footage is in infrared, it is not night time. The farmer has been managing to plough his field in straight strips. This means that there is enough light for him to see what he's doing. The gun camera clock says that it's 16.30 Zulu time. That's about 7.30 in the evening in Iraq. Further, it is clear from the gun camera footage that the field is neither flat nor regularly shaped. There are further internal references within the gun camera footage that show that the field is not flat. Irrespective of perspective, vertical features are observed as vertical. The simplest internal reference for a vertical feature is a person standing up. It is also reasonable to assume, given that the helicopter is hovering, that the vertical crosshair of the gun sight is also a vertical feature. This is internally consistent, as when the gun sight is moved over an upright person, the two match. When a man runs out to meet the tractor, it is again found that the upright of the gun sight matches the upright of the person walking, with the exception of when he slows down to stop before the tractor. However, when the gun sight is moved over the tractor exhaust, it is found that the upright of the gun sight no longer matches the upright of the tractor exhaust. This means that the tractor is parked on a slope. Finally, when a man runs out to where the tractor is about to arrive, you get a sense of perspective that he is running up a hill, given that the man is an internal reference for a vertical feature. Let's now look again at these crucial five seconds that cost these three men their lives. Initially, a man runs out carrying a rod-shaped object up a slight incline and over the brow of a small rise. This rod-shaped object appears fairly thin, it's wrapped in cloth and tied at both ends. The man moves like he's young. The man runs up a slight incline and then over the rise of this incline to drop his rod-shaped object. When he drops the rod-shaped object, we see that there is a nice, warm handprint on the rod-shaped object. In slow motion, we can see that the rod-shaped object appears to contain a springy object that flexes when it is dropped on the ground. Notice the similarity in mannerisms this guy has when he runs up this slight incline. First of all, when he drops his rod-shaped object. Secondly, when he runs out to meet the tractor driver. The rod-shaped object is circled in yellow on the left. We can compare its position versus various geographical markers, such as bends in the field and the two trucks, to work out that this rod-shaped object was dropped about 10 feet in front of where the tractor stops. So in summary, we know these guys are plowing a field. We know that the field is regularly shaped and not flat. We know that they are plowing it at dusk. It's therefore reasonable to assume that the rod-shaped object that they've carried out are marker poles to actually help them plow an irregularly shaped field at dusk. Now let's see how the Apache crew appraises this situation. Yep. I got a guy running, uh, throwing a weapon. Smoke him. This falls abysmally short of the standard of conduct I would expect from a professional First World Army. Over by the uh, other side, you just dropped the weapon. I'm engaging. Roger that. Oh, we need one in your line. You want me to get the gun? Get the guy in the field. Get the guy in the field. Roger. Right there. 
Clear to engage. Clear to engage asked us a rhetorical question. This man wants to pull the trigger. He threw it off in the field, he's running back to his vehicle. Clear to engage or no? Stand by. Having not received permission to engage, the trigger man asked the question again, but this time it's the reverse rhetorical question. Ready to start to lose a weapon? Positive. However, the gunner is not certain that it is a weapon as he pans out back into the field to try and locate the weapon. He fails to do so because it is almost completely thermalized with the field already. Get rid of the vehicle. He's at the vehicle. He's getting in the vehicle. Back out there, he goes towards it. Roger, can you work it between? Do what he does. Wait one, he'll pass it up. So the guys on the ground are just standing around. And when they go out back into the field, you'll notice that they come out about 10 feet in front of where they dropped their rod shaped object. Now he's running back. What's this other guy doing? Because he's engaging. You see him with the weapons in their hands? They yes. The field. This is unforgivable. These people do not have weapons in their hands. You see him with the weapons in their hands? They yes. You see him with the weapons in their hands? They yes. They threw it. Yep. Engage. Smoke yeah, Roger. They did have the, uh, they saw the weapon in their hands. They threw him down and ran after their vehicle. Roger. Uh, Roger. From the chatter in the background here, it would appear that I am not the only one who has doubts whether these guys really were insurgents, and whether this really was the appropriate course of action. They did have the, uh, they saw the weapon in their hands, they threw them down, ran right after their vehicle. Roger. Uh, Roger. Hands, they threw them down, ran right after their hands, they threw them down, ran right after their vehicle. They threw it. Yep. Engage. Smoke. Yeah, Roger. Roger. They did have the, uh, they saw the weapon in their hands, they threw them down, ran right after their vehicle. Roger. 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 show the rest as it contains graphic violence. Needless to say that in the contest between a tank busting helicopter and three unarmed farmers the outcome is a massacre.